Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and we've done a lot of vector boot camp. Well, it is finally time to do the final exam. Here, what we're looking at is, I would call it a pretty much worst case scenario. This is a very curvilinear composition. I have no paths. I have one layer. And what I want to do is to have control. So I want to be able to select like the space between these uh, vertical supports or maybe just the railing. The kind of stuff that you're going to do a lot of when you're working on a painting. And if you don't have layers, it might just seem like it's an impossible task. Well, now that you know all about creating compound paths and layer shapes and vector masks, this should be no problem. So I'm just going to pick one area to start with, but I encourage you to take this image, which you can download at the bottom of the post, and make it path ready. This is part of the process before really any final illustration, so it's good to get in the habit. Okay, so what I want to do is this main railing here. So there's a railing up top, a floor surface below, and also these little vertical supports. That'll be my starting point. Now, I'm actually going to do this one as a path. Yeah, I think if I'm just merging together paths, it shouldn't be a problem. So I go to the pen tool and put it in path mode for starting here. And I'm just going to work from big to small. So I'm zoomed out as far as I can. And I'm just going to be selecting the ground surface here because this is a big continuous shape. It's going to have stuff intersecting it, but I know that's just going to be harder to get correct if I try and do it in little increments. So you can see I'm laying down points and also correcting them as I go. So knowing those keyboard shortcuts is going to be really important. So here we go. I'm ignoring all the intersecting stuff and just getting this ground plane. And I'm trying to do it in as few points as possible because that just means it's going to be easier to modify later. And I'll connect that back on itself. Okay, so what I have now is just this bottom shape. And just before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and name this path. So I'll call this mid-ground railing and floor. Now, as you've seen in the previous videos, there's a couple different ways to go about this. For this example, I'm going to do this mode up here. I'm going to set it to combine shapes. And with MG railing and floor path selected, I'm just going to keep making paths here. Um, now I'm going to do the next biggest piece. So that is this top railing, which kind of goes out of the frame. And you'll see that making big shapes like this is one of those things that just gets easier with practice. I would not expect you to be working quite so quickly. But the more you do it, the faster you'll get. Also, you'll see I'm sort of zooming in here because I want to correct it a little bit as I go. But really, it doesn't matter if you're correcting it now or later. The really nice thing about vector is that it's so malleable. So here I have two independent parts of a single path, but since they're here on one path layer, I can control click and it just makes a single selection. So I'm going to continue on and here's where the strategy comes in. I just think about in terms of my painting, what's going to be a useful selection. Now, in this case, I said I wanted it all to be a single selection. So I'll just keep that path selected. And now I'm just going to add in these vertical bits. And you'll see I'm not careful about where this is terminating because I know with the way these are overlapping, those are all just going to kind of get absorbed into a single path anyway. What I really care about is this vertical bit here. But by breaking this up into big shapes that overlap one another, you get the, such control. If I were trying to kind of go all the way around in one continuous outline, it would not end up being so smooth. Now I'm speeding up the footage here, but really this is just repetitive work. And then there's one final big vertical here up in front. 
Again, trying to use as few points as possible, and I don't care about the way this terminates because it's all going to overlap together. Okay, now it's time to see how we did. I can control click on it, and if it goes correctly, it'll all be one single, yep, one nice selection. Very good. I've named it. There it is, looking good. Now this video would get really long if I went into each and every part of the image in the same way. The last thing I wanna show, just because I think this stuff is important and it bears repeating, is if I wanna get the inside of this bookcase minus the railings, it's gonna be one of those compound selections. And as I said before, the way that Photoshop handles this means you have to actually start with shapes. So this is going to be a couple step process, but we'll start with a shape, which is here in the layers palette. Make the big containing shape. This is what I'm going to then use a cookie cutter to remove part of. So I have my big containing shape here. Don't care about this edge. Then I need the cookie cutter, but right now it's a path. And what I actually want it to be is a shape layer. So this is where I select the path. I say layer, new fill layer, solid color. This is just going to be my cutter and it's going to be temporary. So I'll call it cutter, pick a color. Okay, beautiful. Cool. Now I have both parts as shape layers, and this is the important bit. So I make sure the cutter is above the other one, select both, go to layer, combine shapes, subtract front shape. Ta-da! That was a lot easier because I'd already done that big confusing one first. So before I go too far here, I need to name this new shape, the one that's now just called cutter. I don't actually need it in my layers palette. I just want it here in my paths palette. So I'll rename this to books left. And I'm gonna throw away the shape. And there we go. Now you see there's all these extra points and that's just because it's a compound path. If you select it, control click, you can see it's really just this one area. If I paint it in there, you can see it has exactly the look I want. So maybe I would do for something like um, adding in shadows. So I would select a dark color and then sort of gently paint in a shadow without worrying about going on top of that railing. So you can see there's so much power here. And especially because it's vector, you can tweak it. Let's say I didn't get the shape quite right. I can just go in here take any of these points and shift it around. And I can change the resolution. All the things that make vector so powerful become even more powerful once you really understand how to make these compound paths. So I call this final exam on purpose. I think this image here, if you download it and try and isolate all the important parts of it, is going to be a great test of the vector bootcamp. If you find it hard to do or you're really kind of fumbling around, go rewatch some of those videos because none of this is easy. It's all pretty abstract. But once you figure it out, you're going to be so happy you know it. So good luck and have fun making paths. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.